what I had to offer to me, what would be an appropriate way for me, stuff like that. I shared with you guys how I met Jim and had to take a huge risk. Well, God was doing a new thing in my life. God was raising me up. I didn't realize it. He was actually raising me up for ministry. He was raising me up to heal broken people and reach teenagers and share the gospel. And against all odds, I met Jim. And I had just been praying all those years. Like, oh, Lord, I just want a husband to hold my hand. You know, God said, you have no idea, Karen. There are three little girls praying for a mother. There's a broken man that used to be a pastor who needs a wife. It's bigger than what you're seeing. Get your eyes up and open. Well, when I met Jim, we were dating for a while, and he said, I need you to come out to the house because I need you to meet my daughters. He had three daughters he was raising, and he said, I need you to come out to the house to meet the girls. Now, I didn't know that the girls had set Jim down and said, Dad, we love you, but you have horrible taste in women. Would you please not... Get involved with another woman. Would you please not marry? Women have hurt us a lot. Their mom had hurt them many, many times. They said, we're in high school. Would you just give us a break? And um, please don't bring another woman in our lives. And so we're out of school. And do whatever you got to do. So I didn't, we didn't know if that had happened. But anyway, Jim said, come out to the house and meet the girls. Now, he had written some directions for me how to get to his house. I lived over in the Redondo Beach, Torrance area. And he had written directions for me to get to his house in Corona. I didn't know where Corona was, but he had written it out, and I had a Thomas guy. Remember Thomas guy? So um, I had my Thomas guy. I opened it out. I was reading my Thomas guy. I'm in my little red Honda stick shift, and I'm driving out to Jim's house, and I have my little directions, and I'm like, this is so neat. I'm going out to this man's house, and we knew we were getting married. We were in premarital counseling. We were reading all the books and working really hard. And he said, come out and meet the girls. It was our, it was his youngest daughter, Jennifer's 15th birthday. And I'm coming out for the first time to meet the girls. And um, I'm driving out there. And I've got his directions. I've got Governor Thomas Guy. And I'm driving. And I'm driving. And I'm driving out the 91. And I was so touched because I never felt special. I never had guys that, you know, bought me flowers or bought me a necklace or anything. And I was so, I'm driving, and I'm driving, and I'm driving, and I'm in Orange County, and I'm thinking, how far has this man driven to take me? And it really touched me, and I thought, I never even felt like anyone would be inconvenient. My dad never even bought me school shoes, you know. I thought, I can't believe this man's been driving this far to date me, and I'm driving, and I'm driving out the 91, and my Thomas guy ran out. <laughs> it was L.A. Orange County, and I thought, where on earth am I going? And I'm reading his little piece of paper. I wish I had kept that little piece of paper, 91 Freeway, and I'm driving, and I'm thinking, where in the world is Corona? And then finally, a sign comes up, you know, so many miles to Corona, driving, 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 and then a sign says, welcome to Corona, driving, driving, and there's the Surface Club exit, and there's my in and out. There's my in and out, where I said, I don't care how bad my life looks. I believe that God is going to restore my life. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I have a great and mighty God. And if he can restore Ruth's horrible mess, he can restore my life. And there's my in and out. And I drive a little way and I take an exit to this man's house. And I pull in and there's three teenage girls that I'm about to meet. And I walk in the house, and they look just like me. And they act just like me. <laughs> and I'm looking at three girls thinking, these are my daughters, and I've just never met them. Now, we had an amazing day. And I left that day, and I didn't know that the girls had said to Jim, please don't bring another woman into our lives. We've been through too much already. I didn't know that. But after I left, they sat Jim down and they said, marry her, that's our mother. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. God says, see, I'm doing a new thing. It springs up before you. I can bring streams in a desert. I can make a way in the wilderness. 
and I can have you end up meeting a guy through a blind date through somebody having a coffee shop conversation in Las Vegas, and you're going to meet a guy, and you're going to go to his house, and it's going to be in the neighborhood of your in and out. <laughs> now, I want to encourage you. It's time for a paradigm shift. Stop looking backwards. Stop hanging on to the past. It says don't dwell on the past. Dwell means camp out and live there. God says I'm doing a new thing. Don't you see it? You could miss it if you're not looking. Get into the scripture. Hang on to absolutely every promise. And if God can restore Ruth's life, God can restore my life, God can restore your life. I don't know what it's going to look like, but God can use your life in big ways. It's time to wrap up and pray. I want to encourage you right now as we're going to move into a time of prayer. It might be that you're still 